going on everybody it's your boy nicey chunga benny i'm here with my co-host greg king what's good everybody and you're listening to the ball fake podcast welcome back it's now episode 36 if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify do us a quick favor by liking comment and subscribing to our youtube channel we greatly appreciate it because you know we're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year we know we can do it with you guys' help so make sure you guys support our youtube channel and our podcast overall make sure you also give us five star rating but today we're going to break down the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Philadelphia 76ers and just tell you guys what we think they need to do in order to make the NBA Finals this year. But before we hop into that, quick shout out to our subscriber today. Today is Brendan Smith. Appreciate you supporting our channel and our podcast overall. But the first team we're going to break down is the Boston Celtics. And I know the Celtics, they've had kind of an up and down year this year. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they've been phenomenal. But the rest of their core pieces, they've pretty much sucked the entire year. But I mean, Greg... What do you think this Boston Celtics team needs to do in order to, like, excel in the postseason this year? I mean, they just need to – someone needs to help Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They, I mean, they have something going in Peyton Pritchard. He can he can come in and provide great minute, minutes and knock down shots and help help out on the offensive end. Um, they have they have Tristan Thompson. I mean, he's going to help on the front court because their front court definitely needs some help. And letting go of Daniel Tice, I think that was a bad move. But Marcus Smart is a great. He brings that aggression on the defensive end, but he's not a guy who's going to knock down shots on the offensive end. He only shoots like 34% average from the three-point line. Kimball Walker, I like him, but he's not consistent. And then outside of that, they brought in Evan Fournier, but I think his first game he shot like 0 for 10 or something like that. Yeah, it was a tough night for Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, is he going to help them? And he doesn't have a lot of playoff experience, so is he going to help them in the playoffs? So I, they just have a lot of holes, and I just don't know, like, what are they going to do to really elevate them to even get to the NBA or pass the first round? Yeah, so I, I, think, I mean, this this bench, it's not one of the best benches in the NBA. I mean, they're ranked 24th in scoring, 22nd in assists. So not only do they not score the ball well, they also don't share it well either. And that's probably because they don't really have, like, a traditional point guard or even a combo guard coming off that bench that can really facilitate for them in that second unit. They had a guy in Jeff Teague, but, you know, that didn't really work out. They ended up shipping him to Milwaukee. They got him out of town. But, I mean, aside from that, this Celtics team, as of late, they have, you know, improved. They've been able to rack up a few wins. I think they've kind of rolled the momentum of Jason Tatum as of late. You know, he had a 53-point game against the Timberwolves a few weeks ago. And ultimately, I think... There's their new acquisitions are going to be the difference makers for them in the postseason. Yeah. When I look at the acquisition of you know Jabari Parker, I think okay, they p- match up against a team like the Nets or the 76ers. Jabari Parker is going to be that four that's going to be able to bring bigs away from the basket like yeah. a Joel Embiid, a DeAndre Ayton, not DeAndre Ayton, DeAndre Jordan, but you know guys like that. And I think that can open up the floor for the rest of those. Uh, cutters and everything and you know it'll be able to allow them to have more of a fluid offense and you know stuff like that but that's a great point because they have a lot of versatile power forwards i mean grant grant williams 6'6 six, six, uh ojale is 6'6 six, six, robert williams 6'8 six, so i mean they have guys who are very versatile and can play both sides of the ball so that will help with their small ball lineups that they like to run right and, and, and on top of that you know we can't forget about robert williams he's going to be somebody who's going to excel in a situation like that he's going to be able to get be on the receiving end of penetration passes and be able to dunk in the dunker spot and stuff like that so i mean jabari parker i think he's going to be somebody who can have a positive effect on this team and even offensively i think you know if he's able to get his shot rolling and everything knock a few threes down in pick and pop situations possibly get a few post-ups depending on the matchup and everything he can be somebody who can help this team in the postseason as well but another guy i want to highlight kind of like what you said earlier kimball walker the Celtics are 11 and 6 when Walker scores 20 plus points a night. I think he needs to be more dominant scoring the basketball. How is he going to do that? I'm not necessarily sure. I mean, in the pick and roll, I think he's all right, but I think the the Celtics they have to do a better job of, you know, getting mismatches with him. Like uh, he's one of those break you down type of point guards. I think he can be somebody who can, you know, mess up guys like Embiid, like I said, um DeAndre Jordan's, uh, Jeff Green's possibly, you know, just guys like that. So I think finding mismatches for Kimber Walker in a postseason with the utilization of the pick and roll, it can be something that can help this team in the long run. But last, like you said, Evan Fournier, if he's able to come off the bench or whatever role he's in, I'm not, I haven't really watched too many Celtics games as of late, yeah. but if he's able to, you know, come in and be able to be 
half the player that he was in Orlando in Boston. I think that's going to be a huge scoring boost for this yeah, team. Yeah, they you definitely know, need, in that area. Yeah, they definitely need shooting off. They definitely need shooting off the bench and who can come in and shoot the three and shoot it at a consistent rate. Because I think in the playoffs, you got to be able to space the floor. And I think with what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown bring, I think that'll help a lot. And we're not bashing the Celtics, but we just want to see them improve. And they're moving in the right direction, but they just need to figure out the holes. Yeah. And the last player I'm going to break down, Marcus Smart. I mean, Marcus Smart, he's such a wild card, man. He's one of those guys. He can come in the first four minutes of the game. And he can knock down four three-pointers for you, give you two steals, and you know ride the wave of a 13-3 run but he can also be someone who's very detrimental to your ball club as well come in the game possibly commit two fouls turn the ball over a shit ton of times and then just hurt your offense and your defense Easy. overall and he's going to be the one yelling at other guys as well which is going to hurt the chemistry of the team overall but i mean if marcus smart can just make better decisions because sometimes like he he just makes too many boneheaded plays for me yeah. similar to a guy like Giannis at times in the postseason but we're going to talk about him a little bit later. But, yeah, I, I feel like if he can crack down on that just a little bit, you know, just make better decisions offensively and on the defensive end, the Celtics team, they're going to be in a good position to, you know, advance to at least a conference finals if everything works out. Because we know COVID-19 and everything can, you know, possibly play a big factor in this postseason run. And ultimately, some weird matchups might occur in a, late in the postseason. So that's my take on the Celtics. Yeah. But as far as the Milwaukee Bucks, what is something that you feel like they need to improve on this postseason? I think just guarding a three-pointer. I mean, they don't make any adjustments to the to the three-point line at all. And I think on especially on the defensive end, guarding the perimeter. And these guys very they struggle with guarding the perimeter and not matching up and not not communicating on the defensive end. So that's something that they need to improve on. And I also figuring out who's gonna help Giannis. I like the acquisition of Drew Holiday. Because I think he can take the pressure off of Giannis, and I think he's very good in the pick and roll and can set hit, set teammates up. But can he do a little bit more? He's gonna do a lot more in the playoffs. And and a guy who I like to bash a lot, Chris Middleton. Can they help Giannis on the offense on the offensive end when they build that wall and when there's nothing else to do on the offensive end? Can they come in and be that spark spark plug? So and and one more point. I also want to bring up Mike Budenholzer. Can he make adjustments in the playoffs to put them over the hump? They've been so detrimental, and he doesn't make any adjustments when adversity happens, and you can see it on the court. Right. I, I want to touch bases on that real quick. Mike Budenholzer, this entire year, I have to give him credit where credit is due. He has actually been somebody who's not kept it consistent for this Bucks team offensively. You know, he's put them in numerous situations. Um, th they've really thrown a lot of, you know, different offensive schemes at teams this year. That way they're not very predictable, and you don't really know what to expect for them when the postseason comes. Drew Holiday, he talked about that on J.J. Reddick's podcast not too long ago, how, you know, they've been able to be very versatile offensively when it comes to, you know, their play style and everything. So I think that can be something that can benefit them later in the postseason. But as far as the different type of offensive schemes that they've used, I want to see a little bit of Giannis not – play as much on the perimeter i know Giannis is a guy who plays downhill yeah and you know that's the, the majority of the reason why he's playing on the perimeter but i feel like if you stick him in the high post and you know put him in situations where he screens on ball defenders and everything i think he'll be having a lot more opportunities to score easier shots inside and then not have to really rely too much on a jump shot and possibly you know get him in, put him in a few situations with some post-ups and everything yeah. but another thing too is like they, I think this Bucks team, they need to go back to the Chris Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo pick and roll. That success rate with their pick and roll has been very high throughout the years, and I'm not really sure as to why they haven't, you know, gone to it as much in years past, but I feel like that's one aspect that, you know, could really help them as well. But this Bucks team, they're not good when it comes to, you know, limiting possessions. They really give up a lot of their possessions. They turn the ball over oh, a shit lot. ton. Uh, they're ranked 16th on the years. 12.2% of their turnovers, um, of their possessions are turnovers. So yeah. I think that's the number that they really need to cut down on. And that's the, on the responsibility of guys like Drew Holiday and stuff. But I also think that this team, they need to attack the basket a little bit more because they're 21st in free throw attempts and they, they're 26 in makes on a year. So I think that they have to put more pressure on the defense as far as from that standpoint because getting easier buckets at the rim and also being able to knock down free throws is going to be something that can be 
really beneficial for you late in the postseason, especially in late games or in overtimes like that when your legs are dead and stuff like that. So I feel like the Milwaukee Bucks, in my opinion, will probably match up with the Philadelphia 76ers in the conference finals. I know you guys are going to go to the comment section, you know, bash us for that, but <laughs> I really don't give a fuck, man. But <laughs> aside from the Bucks, I mean, what else do you think that this team really needs to do in order I think to help? The, to be honest, I think their role players are not bad. I think Forbes, I mean, can bring that three-point shooting off the bench. I think that Pat Connaughton brings some good energy. DiVincenzo can bring good energy. I think, actually, Giannis' is brother. I think if he can continue to develop, I think he can match up. He's 6'6", has good size. He can he can help them in that. And they added P.J. Tucker, a veteran presence. I don't he hasn't played as much lately but if he can get back on the court and be that type of three and d player for them i think they have a they have a they have a shot to match up with these with these guys i mean they have the versatility on their lineup to do it they just have to figure that out and i also like brooke lopez who can stretch the floor and but on defense he's not good at you know closing out shots and yeah, they, and, they have to fix their defensive scheme. There's too many times where, you know, they're in scramble mode and Giannis or Brooke Lopez are forced to, you know, be the guys closing out on shorter guards and everything. Yeah, and especially a guy like Brooke Lopez, that's that's you should never put a big in that position to, you know, hurt your team like that. So I think defensively they have to fix a few of their schemes and everything and kind of fix their rotations because their rotations are a bit poor yeah. at times. But I feel like if they able to fix those areas – basketball wise they should be good yeah i totally agree but as far as the last team we're going to talk about is the philadelphia 76ers this is a team we've been high on all year i really think that they're going to be the team to make it out of this eastern conference just because i really don't have much trust in the brooklyn nets this year but greg what are, what are your thoughts on the sixers this year i love this roster mb's playing at an mvp level ben simmons is playing really good too i like the i like the makeup of this team tobias harris is getting back to how he played with the clippers with doc rivers score averaging 20 right now shake milton is a good piece i'm i really really like Thibel. He's a guy who's going to get after the defensive end. He's going to create deflections. He's going to get into these to, into these guards and a great perimeter player on the defensive end that you need. I like I like Seth Curry and what he brings and his shooting. I like Danny Green's veteran presence and he's playing really good. Um, I like Dwight Howard and his aggressiveness and his demeanor. George Hill is a great veteran point guard that they picked up and who will be great um, in that second unit because I mean I like Tyrese Maxey but you know he's a rookie he's not he's not really ready he's not ready for the defensive matchups and stuff you might see so adding a guy like George Hill who can come off the bench and give you that veteran presence who can also shoot I think he was leading the league at one point at last year in three-point shooting from the corners or something like that so I mean he's he's he brings that he brings that energy off the bench so I like this makeup of this team and my worries is just the injuries can they can can they stay healthy throughout the playoffs? And they have a good coach in Doc Rivers, and I, I trust in him, and I think that he, he will lead them with this roster to a to an NBA Finals. Because, yeah, like you said, I don't trust the Brooklyn Nets and their makeup on their team and how they can match up with this um, with the Sixers team because I think the Sixers can match up. You can put Thibault on a on – a, on a Kawhi or or James Harden who can slow him down and they have guys who can match up with different different teams so I, I like the versatility of this lineup and I think they have a chance to go far it's just the injuries yeah I mean it's my opinion I feel like you know this is a team with a lot of championship acumen I mean they're very experienced you bring in guys like Dwight Howard and uh, Danny Green they're fresh off championships uh, you also bring in Seth Curry, who he, he's a pretty decent three-point shooter, if not great three-point shooter. But my problem with the Sixers is their offensive ability. This is a team they only put up 113 points a night. That's 14th in the NBA. Uh, they're 22nd in turnovers, so they don't really do a good job of valuing possessions. And they also don't really share the ball all that well either. They're 24th in assists. And really, outside of Joel Embiid, this is a team that I feel like they struggle to score, man. Like. Ben Simmons, he gives you about a little bit under 15 points a game. Seth Curry, about 12, 13. Same thing with Shake Milton. And Tobias Harris, he gives you 20. But I feel like this team is in need of an alpha scorer, man. I agree. Like, a lot of people talk about Ben Simmons needs to get a jump shot, and I never really agreed with that statement just because, like, I feel like Ben Simmons, he's a great player. It's just the fact that, you know, Joel Embiid's comp hit he, – he draws so much attention to himself that he's compacting the paint. And that's going to hurt Ben Simmons' game. Because it, it's, it's kind of like taking away Giannis's downhill ability. Yep. So he's not going to be the same player. And then that's when you crazy fans go out and say things like, oh, he needs to go out and get a jump shot and everything, which I just don't agree with. But I feel like, yeah, this team needs an alpha scorer. Do I think it's Tobias Harris? I don't think so. I think it needs to be a tier or two above a Tobias Harris. But, I mean, aside from that, 
They also need to shoot more three-pointers, man. This is a team, they're very reliant on their two-point range. And I just don't think that in this three-point area, that's going to really work all that much. You, you're going to need guys to knock down threes yeah. from long distance and everything. But, I mean, aside from that, I feel like the 76ers, once again, they'll make it out of the Eastern Conference and be able to possibly play a team like the Lakers or the Clippers in the finals. But I'm my postseason guess is going to be the 76ers versus the Los Angeles Lakers. But, guys, what do y'all think? Let us know in the comment section. You know, we appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode. It's now episode 36 of the Ball Fake Podcast. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. And follow us on our social media. We're available on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. But, you know, aside from that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.